just want to let you know the Air Force and DOD have not endorsed this video. I am retired, so I can wear the uniform. Apologies for the beard. 475 red line, right? Three, two, one, hack. Gentlemen, it's noon on 30 January. Thank you for coming. Introductions, you guys all know me. Phil, Stitch, Terry, we got Kamasu on the camera. I have very intentionally picked you guys and nobody else because I want to really focus on, on safety today. Speaking of that, everybody has the knock it off hammer. The overall risk today is high. The objective is to safely accomplish the first flight of the bogey and gather data to ensure safe subsequent test flights. So I'm super pumped to be doing that today. Major test points are the brake wear in, the engine brake in, and then the high and mid st speed controllability, which we'll get to here in a second. If you're interested in watching the full uh, brief and a ton down. more flight we'll, test we'll details, make sure to watch the long form version of this episode. And if you're into VR, grab your goggles and join me in the cockpit for a super immersive ride. I'll leave the link to that video here and in the description. Fellas, uh, thanks again for coming. This is going to be exciting one way or the other. And it may not be. It might be boring, but we might, we might scrub it. Boring is good. Boring. 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 Yeah. Boring actually would be... Uh... When the world gets dark, let the light shine in. be fun, dude. Wonder yeah. where we'll go. Anything bad? Uh, I'm just looking at the interior. I haven't seen it since you put. Yeah, I didn't put the front interior in just so I can see flight controls and see if anything's binding and whatnot. But so you can hook shit back up when it comes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got your Leatherman with you. Yeah, right. Oh yeah, no shit. I mean, a, a friend of ours had his rudder cable come off over haystack, and he reached down and took his shoelace out. Oh, oh my ball. gosh. No shit. But here's a quick rundown on this series of flight test episodes. Instead of simply doing the old long-standing 40-hour fly-off for an experimental amateur build, I'm an early adopter of the brand new option to execute a task-based flight test program, which I think is a way smarter, safer, and more efficient way of getting an airplane ready for a long, rewarding service life. That means when I'm done with this program, Phase one will be complete and I can start my backcountry adventures. Clear. But as one of the first builders to go through this new process, the flight test program I've designed is informed from three sources. One, my experience in flight test. Two, advisory circular 90-89 revision C, which is just awesome. Go download it. I'll leave a link in the description. And number three, the EAA flight test manual and test cards, version 1.1. Now don't rush out and buy these since they are under revision. In fact, I'm helping the EAA refine version 2.0. I'll let you know when they're released, but I'll be documenting it the entire way. Now, I have experience testing fighter jets, missiles, Ready. and radars, but this is totally new to me and I'm learning right alongside you. Even more exciting is that this is truly the first time I'll have no one to blame for the build quality and maintenance of an airplane which I'm flying, which is why this is so intense for me. I have so much respect for aircraft mechanics and crew chiefs after this whole experience. All right, now let's get to the good stuff. Bad traffic, backcountry bogey, experimental 223. Charlie Delta, take in runway 16 for test flight. We'll remain above the field. Bad traffic, Skyline. 36 Yankee Yankee, on the downward for runway 55, airborne. Oh, yeah. oh <laughs> Firewall, 2650, looking good. HT is good, RPM a little high, coming back. RPM's coming back, happy, high oil pressure. Not bad though. Alright, 90 knots. 
Jet traffic experimental three, Charlie Delta turn into right, crosswind runway one six. Uh, we'll stay over top of the field. Experimental two two three, Charlie Delta is uh, right down runway one six five thousand climbing to stay over top of the field. Six thousand five hundred rejoin with the bonanza. Four fifty five is my highest. Eighty, I need to get ninety. Come on, get ninety. Bogey test, turn in right base, runway 16, but at uh, 5,600 feet climbing. What's your power? Power is showing about 65%. Vent traffic bogey is uh, high initial, 6,200 climbing over top of the field. Traffic, 6 o'clock, high, less than one mile. Three Charlie Delta 6, November Hotel, has you visual and uh, loud clear with the ground crew in you. Clear rejoin. Bogey making a right hand turn, departure in. Hey Stitch, uh, I'm gonna make a left hand turn here and uh, head a little bit out to the east so I can descend some. I got traffic out to the east, about 1300 low, in sight, white. We'll stay high until we're past that traffic. Good traffic, the experimental test flight is working our way out to the practice area out east. We'll be back in uh, 15. I'm gonna head down to about 5,500, or maybe even lower, depending on uh, how much power I can generate. Stitch, uh, you got the lead on the right. 6 November Hotel has the lead on the right. I got deconfliction, uh, I'm at your right, 4.30. And uh, yeah, left hand turn would be good, and then uh, we'll head for home. Visual. Three, Charlie Delta, if you want to take the lead on the right and do a breakaway to the right. Okay, three, Charlie Delta has a lead on the right, and breakaway in three, two, one. Then traffic experimental backcountry bogey over top of the field, 5500 are joining a right downwind for runway 16, full stop, Ben. R22, uh, Charlie 4, we're in a uh, auto rotation right now. Then traffic experimental 3, Charlie Delta, right base, runway 16, full stop, Ben. Hold up. Success! She flies! Oh man. That was intense. We need to pitch that prop. I couldn't generate very much thrust. It wanted to go to 2700 RPM without a ton of ton of power. You came in pretty freaking hot. I know. Like you flying a jet. You see me, <laughs> see me slipping in at the end? Yeah. Couple knots for mom and the kids. I haven't done any flow speed tests, so <laughs> I don't want a wing drop. You don't know when it's gonna start. Totally. <laughs> so I just want to fly it down to yeah. the runway and then. Grease it on hot. Yeah. No, good job, man. Guys, you made it to the end, except there's one more thing. The most important thing about any flight test or instructional flight is the debrief, right? So let's quickly debrief this. The flow is gonna be, we're gonna talk about the success of today. We're gonna learn things from it. We're gonna fill you in a little bit on some information that you may not have gleaned from the video. I'm gonna show you a very, very cool tool you may not know about. And then we'll get into kinda what's next for flight two, flight test card number two. So jumping right in, mission objective was to safely accomplish the first flight. Y yes, 
we absolutely achieved that. It was uh, a success beyond beyond measure. And, and once again, thank you to my my crew. That was that was huge and meant a lot to me that you supported me in that way. So the major test points, the break wear in, yeah, we absolutely achieved that. Um, I noticed a lot more grip on the brakes. Uh, I could hold the brakes at much higher uh, static RPM than before. And then the engine break in, no, not achieved. And this brings in the tool that I wanna to show you guys. So Garmin G3X, if you enable data logging and put in an SD card in there after a flight, it's gonna upload all this data to the SD card. And you can go to this free service. I'm not sponsored or affiliated in any way by Savvy Aviation, Mike Bush. Uh, they have this service where you can upload all the data and parse through it. So let's quickly show you some features of it and we'll get back into the debrief. So this is the maiden flight. And what we've got here is, well, first of all, you can see your flight map. So you can kind of see where you are. If you click on something over here, it actually shows you where you are in the flight. So I was right there. And then you can just kind of compare all sorts of data and do some of your analysis over on here. But, but let's, I digress. Let's actually turn this guy off. This is the beginning of the flight. This is the end of the flight. And here's what you can select. All this, this data is available for you to, to look through. So what I've got right here is engine power. Cause that's very, very important today. So I, yeah, I, I, I generated that, you know, taken off, but then very quickly I had to pull the throttle and struggle to get over 75% RPM. And you can verify that you can also see all your CHTs, make sure you didn't go over red line. You can zoom in just look at, say, for example this period right there and really get to the nitty-gritty detail you can overlay data such as uh, how chts relate to fuel flow for example so you can kind of compare so huge 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 amount of uh, data here and that's so valuable you know and and i went to my rpm and make sure i didn't overspeed. that's enough on this potentially we'll get more into this in the future but let's get into the big picture items. So engine break in, the pitch of the propeller was only 13 degrees. That's in kind of a stole configuration. The root cause of why I didn't dial that in a little bit better, I think this is important to talk about, is my perception, right? It was a human factor a, or a, a knowledge-based thing. So I didn't realize that dynamic airspeed increases the propeller more than I gave it credit for. And this is going to depend upon what airframe you're flying, right? If you have a, a Lance Air static versus dynamic, that range is a lot more than if you're flying a Kit Fox or a Rans. If you have something to get you started, i.e., in my case, the Whirlwind OEM manufacturer's instructions recommend, you know, for stole, start at 13 degrees, don't start at stole. Do uh, long range cruise, you want to generate as much horsepower and airspeed as you can and maintain that. Suffice to say, you want to generate the heat, the friction, that uh, manifold pressure to break down the honing inside the cylinders. You don't want to glaze the cylinders. So the last test, mid and high speed controllability. We didn't actually go through the test, test plan point by point, but I give that a uh, green achieved that major test point because I did glean a lot of information about its mid and high speed controllability just by flying it and then slowing it down enough to, to, to land it, uh, even though it was a fairly high speed approach as planned. Other notes that you may not have gleaned, all right? You definitely would have gleaned this if you're watching the long form version, Radio 2 Volume Control. It, it was a human factors uh, nightmare in the moment, but right now I'm glad it ended up okay. And it's just like, oh, wow, man, I... I designed the whole electronic schematics and I configured all the buses and everything. I was good on the back end and configuration mode on this G3X Touch. I had no idea how to turn up the volume on Radio 2, which is a remote radio, so it, it, you, there's no physical knob, obviously. So zero knots, one G seems easy, but a handful of brand new airplane and a lot of different things, especially bend to CTAF going on. All right, the horizontal stabilizer incident. So I looked back when I was at max speed at my horizontal stabilizer in the elevator and it was my elevator trailing edge was pointed down, right? So I trimmed that out, super easy to trim. Nothing is extreme, by the way, we're talking very, very close, but I'm excited because, so if I raise the leading edge of the horizontal stabilizer, I won't need as much down elevator to maintain level flight at cruise, which will streamline that whole flight control surface and get a couple extra knots out of the thing and it'll fly better. But I'm not gonna do that until I expand the CG envelope of this aircraft. So right now we're like a third back. So I wanna do some more forward CG stuff. It's a little bit safer. And then later on in the test program, 
expand the CG envelope aft a little bit more, more risk there. So after I do that, then I'll come to a conclusion on what I need to adjust that, that uh, horizontal stabilizer incidence. The idle mixture test. So I've been on, on all my previous engine runs, I've been trying to dial this in. You're looking for a 50 RPM rise when you slowly pull the mixture to idle cutoff when you're at idle and looking for about a 30 to 50 RPM rise and, uh, and finally dialed that in. So I was really happy about that. And then as you notice, the GoPro versus the G3X frame rate is incompatible. I wasn't wearing that GoPro just for the video. I'm recording that so that I can watch things real time. And of course now I'm realizing that all that data is being recorded and I can look back that way. So it's less of a, less of a deal, but I want to figure out what the G3X frame rate is and program my GoPro to be uh, more compatible with that. All right. So what is next? Test card two, so 18 degree prop uh, pitch and continue to break in the engine. Spoiler alert, I've flown this airplane two more times at 17 degree pitch and the horsepower is fantastic and engine break in is going super well. My 450 CHTs are down to the low 420s, so a little bit further to come. We're gonna work on some flap operation, test that, and then do a rough pedostatic check and then some more long, longitudinal control tests, and then wings level stalls. Also perforated vinyl to bring these cool checkerboards through the, the skylight. The other feature of it is to, to protect me from the UV rays, keep the cockpit cooler, the stripes through the doors, I'm having those printed as well. All right, final thought here, and this is an important one, so listen up. Flight test is obviously a very serious business, and this was an intense video, and I thank you for watching it all, but, do not think that you can't do this, right? Yeah, I have the experience and, and I'm, I'm, I'm going kind of above and beyond for a couple different reasons. One's that's just kind of how I operate. My kids would call me a little extra, I think, but I'm using my experience as an F-15 operational test and evaluation pilot to flush out this new task-based process in hopes to make it more refined and easier for you. That said, I am super eager to read your comments to learn how I can approve both the format of this video series, as well as if you have input on the flight test program, I'm all ears. I'm learning just like you. I'll let you to it. Bites on. Till next time, you're clear direct. Successful first test flight, the bogey has a soul. Woo!